Welcome to Focus Washington. Dr. Tony and I have a special guest today, Don Goldberg, who once worked at the Clinton White House and is a partner at Corvus Communications. Don, thanks for being here. Thanks, Chuck. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. We've been watching now with the new administration a lot of different new appointments coming on. What do you think of the appointments that the president-elect has made so far? Well, there are two appointments in the White House staff that we know about so far. The first is Rahm Emanuel, the former number four person in the House leadership, to be the White House chief of staff. Now, when that came out, it was a little bit controversial. Some people thought, well, maybe he's a little bit too partisan. Rahm is actually, I think, a great choice. I worked with him day in and day out for a number of years in the, in the Clinton administration before he was a member of Congress. Rahm knows how to get things done. He knows how to, how to identify the key issue to deal with. He's great at making assignments and following up. And he's very short and sweet and to the, to the punch. And he will be very effective. Well, the criticism is that he's abrasive. And especially a lot of the Republicans on the Hill said, what, what does this mean, that you're going to have someone as abrasive like that in the White House dealing with us? Well, I think the White House Chief of Staff is one position where you need to be a little bit of abrasive uh, character. If you're too much of a nice person, you can't actually get, you can't bang heads the way that presidents need. Presidents can be nice, can listen to everybody. Chiefs of Staff have to actually execute. And I think Rom will bring a lot of value to that particular need of uh, Senator uh, Obama. Um, the other thing that Rom has, which I have saw in my White House days, you know, in Washington, there are two types of people in the political world. There's staff and there's principals. Principals are the elected members of Congress. They're the, the ambassadors. They're the cabinet secretaries. They're clearly the president <coughs> and the vice president. Staff are people like myself who worked on Capitol Hill and staffed other members or worked in the White House and staffed the president. Never confuse the two. Staff and principals are at a different level. And a principal will only respond to another principal. Rom got his experience as a White House staffer in the Clinton years. Then he went on to get himself elected to Congress and serve at a high level in the, in the House of Representatives. He now has both experiences. He's a principal who can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with those tough members of Congress, the tough members of the Cabinet, the tough other uh, people around the world. But he's got the experience of a staffer, and it really, I think, is a great choice. Well, as you well know, a lot of the staffers think they are principals, and you must have seen that at the White House. What was the experience like working in the White House? Most of us have never had that kind of experience. Well, the White Working at it is, and people have asked me, was it fun? I'm not sure it was fun, because when I was there, we had a lot of scandals to deal with, which was sort of my experience. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's a great, it's, a, it's an amazing experience, one I wouldn't trade for anything. It's historic every day you walk into a situation that you just can't believe that you've elevated, you've been elevated in the situation where you're working in the West Wing, in the White House, in the old executive office building. Uh, you're, every day you're seeing presidents, world leaders, ranking members of Congress, ambassadors, cabinet secretaries, you're dealing with them every day in a historic setting. Everything you do, you live out in the front pages of the newspapers, and it's, it's an amazing place to work, an amazing experience. But it is difficult. You said there were two appointments. The second appointment you haven't spoken about. The yet. second one is Ron Klain, who we just learned yesterday was going to be appointed to be uh, Senator Biden, the Vice President-elect's Chief of Staff. And I've, I've known Ron Klain for years and worked with him in the White House, too. He had that situation under Gore at the same time. Ron is one of those few Washington creatures that lives up to his hype. He's as good as people would have you believe. He's got some of the best political instincts, some of the best media instincts uh, that I've ever seen in Washington. Uh, he knows how to get things done, but he's, and he's also very well respected and well liked. I think it's a great choice for the vice president. You think he'll be successful? That's a very tough job. You know, success is what you, that's a tough one. I mean, what is the goal of the vice president uh, coming into administration? Mm -hmm. Unclear. Senator Biden clearly has uh, stature and needs to navigate uh, whether he has foreign policy credentials that he's going to be exercising or exactly what his role will be is unclear. But Ron Klain, as his staff person, will know how to figure out the best uh, strategies, the best policies, and sort of how the vice president, who is in a role that really is meaningless unless you make it into something, can make it into something. Well, you know, having worked at the White House as you have, we hear from time to time how interesting it is to be involved or get in with the White House mess. Most of us never get an opportunity to eat at the White House mess. What does that mean? The White House mess is, one, it, it, I used to say, it's one of the few real perks you have as a senior level White House staffer. You have to be a certain level uh, to be there. And there's also, it's open to cabinet secretaries. It's a place where you can have, uh, you can be treated as if you are important, even mm -hmm. though if you're just staff. Uh, it's run by the Navy, and that's a history that goes back a number of hundreds of years, because the Navy always had the best cooks amongst the military right, yes. services so that they've run the mess. Um, you, it's, it's a club. It's a private club. You have an account there. You never see a bill. Uh, they treat you like you're, you know, like they know exactly who you are by name. 
there are two sets of tables there. There's two big staff tables that are open at any time only to staff. And so I, I would be there. I could have lunch next to a cabinet secretary, next to Franklin Raines, with the time was head of mm -hmm. OMB, or next to former uh, uh, current staff. And we would ca could have an open conversation about what's going on. If you have a table, there are set times there. And the only two rules are no journalists and no foreign nationals, because oh. they didn't want anybody overhearing conversations that might be sensitive. So you can bring guests in is, and I, impress them, but you can't bring a journalist Exactly. In. So uh, you could bring unfair. your family in if you wanted to impress your, you know, one thing <laughs> yeah. I've ever impressed my parents on is taking them to the White House mess. Oh. Uh, or you could bring members of Congress that you're working with, but you couldn't bring reporters and you couldn't bring foreign, you know, foreign nationals. But it's a great place. Uh, like I said, it's one of the few perks that they're really in for White House staff. Well, if you ever get back to the White House, try to invite me. Thanks a lot for being here. Thank you, Chuck. Here. I appreciate it. I'm Chuck and Cody, and this is Jim.